This series is presented by Solo Hunter brand rifle covers, your gun's best protection against the elements. You might not know this about me, but despite being a Western-born Idaho boy, I'm absolutely ate up with whitetail deer hunting. I owe this addiction to my pal Jeff Danker, who nine years ago introduced me to Northwest Oklahoma and hunting whitetails. Ever since then, I head out east and hunt with my good friends Jeremy Durkee and Stacy Chester on a small farm we lease in Northwest Oklahoma. I parked off the edge of this wheel pad so that I can just walk right off the corner here. It's not 50 yards off the corner of this oil pad, so nice easy access. Pretty excited. Time to get this thing going. I'll smack a slick for some camping tonight. But I'm looking for one of those bucks, so I'm just gonna sneak right in here. Oklahoma. Bow hunting for whitetails with my new prime is underway. There always seems to be something magical about sitting in a stand for the first time each season. A lot of my Western friends will tell you that sitting in a tree stand and waiting for a big buck to come wandering under your tree just isn't real hunting. And to that, I might agree. All the hunting takes place in the days, weeks, months, and even years before. We hunt hard to find the most optimal ambush points to hang a tree stand. Sure, we might get lucky to have a big buck wander under our tree, but let's not forget that I hung that stand there for a reason, and oftentimes for a particular deer. Surrounded by moon cows. A lot of deer movement, a lot of deer moving out in that CRP out there. But normally they funnel back through right through here. But these cows just kind of followed me in. And I'm sure the deer just kind of bumping around. sit here for about another hour and uh, get out and make a move. These are self-documented hunting adventures with no production crews. We hunt in very remote locations and often dangerous situations. We are solo hunters. Just something about this kind of weather and this kind of experience, just this kind of brutality, it makes you feel like a man. 
My favorite backpacking food is dead animal. <laughs> bear, bear, bear. Make you think twice about stepping out of the tent to take a leak in the middle of the night, that's for sure. Filming myself and trying to shoot stuff just frustrates me. It makes you feel like you're a horrible hunter. That's not the case. You're just a horrible cameraman. <laughs> Solo Hunters is brought to you by Muzzy Broadheads, Carbon Express, Gorilla Gear, Outdoor Edge and Vortex Optics, Prime by G5, and Campbell Cameras Relive Your Adventure. Closed captioning provided by Trophy Taker Fallaway Arrow Rests, leading the way on the line and in the field. Solo Hunters is brought to you by Prime Bows from G5, where accuracy is everything. never dropped my bow out of the stand before. But as I was pulling it up, I dropped it. And I dropped my GoPro. I just shot it today too and dialed it. I'll just, I'll have to check my marks, make sure they're where they're at. Well, after picking up my yard sale, checking the marks on my bow, and getting my act back together, I'm finally ready to get back into action. The weather has warmed up quite a bit, but I'm in my favorite staging stand set up in a pinch point that I know big bucks have been traveling through. The winds have really started to pick up, but at least they're staying true. They're staying out of the north, northeast, which is the wind that I hung this stand for, so. Keep quiet and uh, hope a big buck moves through here, scent checking these willows and plum thickets that are out here in this clearing. I'm well, betting should be back that way. This is where we've seen him in the past, so hopefully we'll see him again. But we, I mean, I. Glad I shot a deer, but during the rut, I hate to get out of stand. I don't think she'll last very long. Stuck in, there's hair all over. Blood. That muzzy opened her up. I am not afraid to serve up a little camp meat. Got a nice dough here. Made a great shot, and I've only got to drag her about 150 yards. And 
We'll be barbecuing some back straps tonight. Behind the Lens is brought to you by Campbell Cameras. Relive your adventure. One of the things that Remy and I have worked really hard to create is to try to capture all of the action as live as possible. We try to capture everything live. The only way to do that is with second camera angles as the action is happening. One thing that I like to do and Remy does as well is we attach our GoPro or point of view camera to a stick. I use, this is just a broken shooting stick. This is very effective out of a tree stand or on the ground because I can quickly and easily put that camera in a position that's gonna give me a great second angle shot. This segment of Solo Hunters is brought to you by Carbon Express. Shoot better. Solo Hunters is brought to you by PhoneScope, digiscoping accessories for your smartphones. Well, it's uh, Saturday, so this I guess is my sixth day bow hunting. And the wind's ripping. Got 40 mile an hour wind, 60 mile an hour gusts. I'm not getting up in trees. But the bucks are chasing like crazy. Saw a good one last night. So I'm gonna get off the backside, the north side of this little ridge here, and just sit up on the ground in the shadows somewhere. And maybe get lucky. If a buck comes through like that doe did, I, I can kill him. If I can get the camera on him fast enough, I can get the bow fast enough. Guarantee it. It's just tough to tell your distances from in a wide open space like this. So. Anyway, I'm gonna get quiet. Got about two more hours left.
wasn't quite sure if I was going to shoot him or not, but then I decided I'd give it a shot since I'm on the ground. Had him at 40 yards right out here, but he, he saw me moving, so I couldn't reach for my bow. And then as he came around this tree right behind me, I got to my bow and got a little careless. And he stood out here at 30 yards, and I was able to get the camera turned around and draw him back. But then he bounded out. By then it was, the kick was up, but that was pretty awesome. I'd love to be able to get it done on the ground, that'd be sweet. But for sure, tomorrow midday, I'm gonna work my butt off to get a stand in that tree. I've been wanting to do it for years, and now I'm gonna do it. Still got about another 30 or 40 minutes, so. Never know, another one might come through. Solo Magnified is brought to you by Vortex, the force of optics. Because your vision might be different between your two eyes, most binoculars, you're able to adjust to each individual eye. First, you're gonna pick something about 25 yards away. You're gonna look through the binoculars, close your right eye, and use your main focus to make whatever you're looking at crisp. Then you're gonna close your left eye and use your diopter adjustment for your right eye and make that in crisp focus. Then you'll open both eyes and your binos will be perfectly focused for each individual eye. This segment of Solo Hunters is brought to you by Big Green Targets. Go big, go green. For more information on all of our Solo Hunter brand products, social and digital media, or to book a hunt in one of Remy Warren's guided hunting destinations, contact us at solohunterstv.com. Solo Hunters is brought to you by Adventure Medical Kits and Survive Outdoors Longer. Expect the unexpected. It's just breaking daylight. It's a little colder this morning, but the sun's just coming up. So I heard some chasing, I thought, out there a little bit. That's pretty neat, that bobcat coming through. Saw a deer running. And then behind it, that bobcat was just chasing after him. sure about the shot but I thought I heard him crash right there I mean it may have been that he was just getting his butt out of here thought I saw some blood coming out pretty good so I might have caught that artery but I know it was high and back so anyway he's pretty cool to come right behind me I didn't see him down or hear him until he was right in the wood line here junk on the one side, you know, just an ape, so thought what the heck, might as well smack him last day here. Just so y'all know, I am not opposed to putting meat in the freezer. I'd love to shoot Big Buck. I've shot a couple. It's what it is, I'm a hunter. Well, there's the stand. Beautiful spot. It's a nice staging area for pre-rut. The travel corridor for the rut. Nice pinch. So, let's see, let's see what we got. Look was right up here. When I watched the video back, I thought I saw some blood come out. There's some right there. They had to have 
cut that artery because when I saw blood, that early, it couldn't. Uh, there he is, right there. <laughs> It obviously did the ugly deed. See what we got. I know he's just that little seven point or six point or whatever he is. I'm not at all disappointed to get this guy out of here. So take him home. And we had to go to the grocery store last night because we ran out of food. Well, now we got we got some back straps. So we'll be eating good again tonight. That's awesome. This is how my Oklahoma bow season ends here. I'll be back out here for rifle and hopefully be able to put something bigger down. Now that I've got this buck down, I can definitely be a little bit more picky with, with my rifle buck. My Oklahoma bow hunt for this year is over, but in a couple of days it will be rifle season, and judging from everything I've seen out of the stand this week, it looks like the rut is about to bust wide open. And when it does, I will be waiting. I love to bow hunt for sure, but I'm also not afraid to pull out the big whapper and do a little long range smackdown on a burly Oklahoma buck. The Solo After Show is brought to you by Outdoor Edge, quality knives and tools for the big game hunter. Can't seem to get enough solo hunters? Now you can get extended behind the scenes access into the show. You'll find additional video clips from our fans, as well as a look into some of our exclusive tips and outtakes that we couldn't fit into the show. All this and more at solohunterstv.com.